Hi, my name is Tom Atkinson, and I am a GBC addict. <laughs> Not recovering. Uh, so we're going to talk about modules, and uh, I know we've done several of these videos, so I'm going to kind of skip over ones that we've talked about before and, and kind of try to go into some detail on the ones we haven't. So we're going to start right here uh, with some modules that uh, have been around a little bit, but they work pretty well. This one rotates balls up and dumps it into this series of modules that are they're based on a, a small spinning tire through some curved bricks to bring them up slowly. And there's a whole series. And then we go on to, uh, uh, there's, there's an add-on here where as the ball comes down, it slowly cranks this, which slowly makes the man walk up the hill. But he gets to the top, he goes back down again. Anyway, we'll move on from there. we got a, a ball pump here. Um, this is this is a very interesting mechanism to keep it from jamming. It will automatically flip the other direction uh, if it feels too much tension. Uh, it was a, a neat mechanism to keep things from jamming. Uh, and then the balls flow through the GBC <laughs> and onto an, an older step module. Uh, then we go onto a, a rotating module that brings the balls up and around. Um, slow spiral. On top, of, on top of uh, an area where the, the balls have two choices to go. It looks like they're mostly going over the blue area. Um, but the balls can come down this way, too. Uh, this is supposed to represent uh, land and water. Uh, from there, the ball's going to uh, a, an, an extended version of this small rotating tire. That brings this up quite a bit. One of the things that, uh, you can look at the back side of this, you can see that there's a big long uh, axle set with um, worm gears driving the individual sections all the way up. Uh, pretty clever how that works. Uh, the next module after that is, well actually this feeds into um, the candy machine uh, and it, it's really cute, it has a little flap where the candy comes out and the rotating place you put the coins in, although I, I don't think it'll accept any more than maybe one coin. And there we have a a pusher module, which leads to uh, a conveyor um, that kind of interesting has this reverse curve to it, uh, bringing it up and over and around. From there, we go to uh, another module that has a, the rotating disc with holes um, for bringing the, the balls up one at a time and around and dropping them in. On to a lifting platform module. Um, which is starting to get very worn out, so it's more like a wobbly lifting platform. Needs some uh, new parts in it. And there we move on to uh, a, another step module. This is this is another very old module that still just works rock solid, keeps going. Still kicking. <laughs> still kicking. Um, from there we go on to a, a chain built uh, conveyor. Um, which brings the balls up and drops them down into a zigzag pattern to kind of slow them down, dropping into the next, which is another one of the small rotating balls. From there we go to these uh, light <laughs> flipping modules um, that, that takes it up a step at a time, flipping around. From there we go to uh, an inverted conveyor belt, which makes a circle and the balls are brought up uh, one at a time on the inside. And the, you might want to stay there because we're going to do kind of a loop here. So from there we go to a module that is has a ball pump in it and leads to a section that, that splits the ball path into two. And you can see there's a thing flipping in there so that one ball goes this way and then the next one goes that way and the next one goes this way. And then these arms bring them up one at a time. Um, right now we have all the balls going this way. We can flip this so that the balls go, some of the, half the balls go this way, or we can flip it so that all the balls go that way. Right now we have it this way so that all the balls go this way because we have an extra little blip in the loop. Another one of these spiral modules that le then leads to um, this train module uh, based on an Akiyuki design, but modified to be uh, significantly more reliable. Uh, which brings the balls down to the end here, and they get dumped out, and probably want to wait a cycle and watch the dump, too. Uh, but in, this is very interesting in that all the work is done by the train car. 
and when it gets to the end, it's the motor on the train car that's driving this mechanism. Same thing there. So, from once the balls unload here, the simple ball pump, it comes up to a ramp which drops it into a wave module based on Philo design. Uh, from there they go to another small ball pump which brings them, which basically feeds uh, this slow sliding box. So a small basket stumped into the box. This is a pretty new module, so we'll talk about this. This is a, a very clever use of um, a, a blocking mechanism to keep to keep the um, the balls not flowing when the box is not there, and then when the box comes down, it allows them to flow in. And then the box's bottom is open, so once it gets high enough up, they just flow out again. From there, we go to um, my uh, spiral screw, Archimedes screw. It's been around for a while. Um, and from there we go into this tall binomial distribution module <laughs> made by Jeremy. Uh, this is kind of interesting. It fills up, and it, at some point, um, I'm not sure where we are in the cycle. Um, you can tell by looking at how many balls. I think it just dumped a few seconds ago, so I think it's going to be a little... <laughs> All right, we missed it then. Okay. Um, so it, it fills up to a certain point. Uh, it runs for, what, 100 seconds or something? Yeah, 100 seconds. Uh, so I designed this module. My first concern was to be really, really uh, reliable with it. I didn't want to drop any balls at all. Uh, so I had to build up these walls really strong. Building with system brick is actually a lot better for reliability of GBCs. You know, a lot of these GBCs, we're building with Technic. You see a lot of Technic there. But the thing is that it gets flimsy. Even though you've got those pins together, the things still flex a little bit. But the system brick is really, really solid. Uh, so that, that's how I did this. Um, at the bottom here, this ramp, it's split in two so that when it drops, half the balls recirculate. Now this can be pretty easily reconfigured to just lift up this ramp halfway so that all the balls go one way or all the balls go the other way so that if the other modules are broken, we can still have this thing running constantly and still be entertaining to everyone. Sure, yeah, so that works nicely. Um, I, one other thing that Jeremy didn't mention was that um, this next module is really part of this, but because this, this module dumps so many balls at once um, that exceeds the spec, and a, a normal module that would be downstream from that would be overwhelmed. So he made a special add-on module that can take 100 balls at once and give them out back at a rate that's within the spec. So from there we go to a, an older module I have. It's recircling. This is my number two module made almost 10 years ago, nine years ago or so. Uh, from there we go into um, Benjamin Moody's really cool uh, Technic built conveyor belt. Um, this is one of my favorite modules in, because it, it has a three-tooth gear driving it. I can't say enough about this one. Uh, it's really cool. It, it's bright. It's, it's colorful. It's pretty, and it, it works very well. So, from there we go into a, a, a different kind of flipping module. It's you know, it's kind of like a step module, kind of like a flipping module. It, it's bringing them up one notch at a time, um, and that allows the balls to go on. This is one of several modules. Uh, that have a mechanism to recirculate. So if something we have a problem downstream, uh, I can just flip this over and the balls will recirculate. Um, so, but ordinarily we just balls go on. Okay, so that works nicely there. <laughs> so from there we go into oh, uh, from there we get into a jam situation here where uh oh, this is actually. This is why we do this in the morning, so that we can, uh, you know, eliminate the problem. So from here, this this is a, um, grabs the balls, theoretically one at a time, and brings them up, and drops them into the, the slot to leave. Um, from here we go into a, a Steve Hassan plugs module, which fits in perfectly inside of a cardboard box. Um, so pack up for this module is easy, you just drop it in the box, he's done. This is based on Akiyuki's mechanism um, that picks up the balls by pressing three legs over the ball. There's enough friction there to pick it up, and then when it reaches the top, this bar is pushed 
to open the three up and drop the ball. This, if you can tell, because of the, there's four different things doing this, this can handle, it can move along a lot of balls. So Steve comes over and complains and says, hey, how come there's no balls in my machine? It's because it gets rid of them before anybody can see them. Anyway, this is a pretty neat thing, pretty popular. And there we go into a uh, simple conveyor, which uh, basically allows us to load up this long ramp to get the balls over the end of this big giant thing we'll discuss when we get to the other side. And here we go into a, a, an interesting use of uh, bionicle parts for a uh, scooper. Um, and, and the terrific use of orange. <laughs> uh, and then we go into another ball pump, which feeds another one of these splitters. And this one we're actually using as a splitter. We have two separate ball paths here. Um, we have enough modules here that I, I wanted to get as many as we could on the table for several reasons. It's more cool stuff and world's record, and we'll talk about that later. Um, so the, there's one ball path that goes down there, and that's the one we're going to follow for now, but I want to talk about this train module. This is a train module made by Stuart Roll. It's uh, relatively new, based on NXTs. Uh, the train has intelligence in it. And, and this, the loading station has intelligence in it and kind of communicates by way of the train comes back and sees these colored uh, markers so it knows where it is and then it, the station knows when the train is present and loads a certain number of balls and then through some lights here, LEDs, it tells the train that, okay, I'm done, you're full and the train goes off and dumps automatically at the other end. So it's a very clever design, and, and so far it's been pretty reliable. So, all right, so we'll, we'll catch up with the train down the other end, and we'll continue down this path. Uh, this set of modules has been uh, slowly improved over the years. Very colorful, um, and and it's there's something appealing about this to me anyway, just because it's it has that rainbow effect, but it works. And uh, getting from one to the other uh, with this moving platform with odd shaped holes in it balls will find a way through eventually um, from there it goes on to a relatively new module this is um, actually the first convention this has been to this is made by a friend of mine and he convinced me by showing me how well it worked at home that I could take this and it would work without him being present and it's worked pretty good. It, there is an issue with it that I will discuss when we get home, but um, it seems to be working pretty good. This is the the actual lifting mechanism is is uh, an Akiyuki design, um, but with this particular module, Akiyuki really spent a lot of time showing how the the mechanism works up top, but left the rest of the design to the builder. Uh, and 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 my friend Dave had to come up with some innovative ways to keep the balls from jamming at the bottom and a neat way to get the balls down to the next module. So from there, we go to a whole string of modules, and this is a kind of a unique thing in that um, this is a module, this is a module, and this is one, this is one, and the last two were one, and they're dr all driven by one motor. And so this was, this was done by gentleman named Owen who came all the way from Australia to, to show off his... Wow, so he traveled quite a distance to get here. Him, him and his modules. <laughs> and uh, he, he developed his own standard interface between the modules so he could pass power between them, not just the balls, but power. Um, I know he's going to continue adding to this. And, and theoretically, you, you should be able to swap these around to some degree. Um, but it's the, the functions are... You know, not the functions themselves are not new, but his implementation of them is, is pretty unique. The stepper module is pretty interesting in how it's built at an angle, as well as as this um, using the reverse um, tank treads, and as well as the, the his adaption of the Philo's design using the bucket. Uh, he uses a different mechanism to hold the balls back here. Um, and it, it seems to work pretty darn reliably. Um, and from there we go into a rotating bunch of pegs that slowly work the balls up. And 
wiggles the balls up, I guess you should say. Um, from, the, from there we go into a, a conveyor, which feeds into, and this is kind of nifty how it will hold three balls, and then at the fourth ball it will tip over, tip and dump them. And the mechanism, the, this mechanism is neat. That's the one that grabs four and drops. The next mechanism takes the batch of four and, and turns it back into a one at a time. And it's very clever in that it uses the weight of the, the ball to allow the next ball to go. Uh, it's, a, it's a clever design. I, yeah. I admire the man. <laughs> and there we go to a module that's been around for several years. And uh, I think it worked yesterday without any flaws, right? Is that true? This didn't break at all yesterday? Well, that's a record right there. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get grief for that statement later. Uh, but this is beautiful, colorful. Um, balls come up and can split and recirculate. Uh, half of them go around again, and the other half goes on. Um, it can also be designed to recirculate by flipping this lever, then all of them will go around and around. From there we go into um, a, a module that's new, and that some, uses a technique I've been trying to discourage. Be, be, but we, it's a new builder, so we let them get away with it this time. Spinning tires and feeding balls into them. Uh, it, it's been working great. The, all day yesterday it worked fine. Uh, the, the, my thing against spinning tires is it does a little burnout on the, on the ball, and then that rubber gets distributed through the rest of the great ball contraption. Uh, but this one doesn't seem to be so bad, so. It's certainly interesting the way it shoots them out that fast it there. And it does it, it does it very repeatably, which is cool. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, after that we go to, um, my oldest module, the, the shooter, which is, um, Started off as about the un, most unreliable module ever, and is still not there yet. Um, but seems to be working okay uh, for the moment, and it is definitely uh, a crowd pleaser because it shoots a ball. Anything that shoots a ball, this shoots a ball, this shoots a ball. The crowd loves it. So um, after the balls work their way from there, they come down to this module that uh, takes them slowly in four rows and then combines it and works it around and onto a, uh, a Technic built uh, conveyor chain driven by square gears, which I, I think is a neat thing. From there we go to a small uh, a small ball pump, and this is one of Steve Hassenplug's very, very old modules. Um, it, I don't think it's the oldest one, but it's like the second or third. And that's where we combine, this dumps into the train station uh, and here comes the train to recombine the two paths of balls that we had created back okay. back there at the splitter. Uh, from there, we have a, a simple stepper that brings us into a tipping ramp module, which has been around, seen before. From there we go into another simple stepper, um, which was... This was built using the same part set as last year's um, workshop build. Uh, it's kind of funky looking, but that, the reason being I was working with the same set of parts. So from there we go into uh, the shooter, uh, this salmon run I call it, which is a series of little shooters. Um, and they, they seem to be working pretty good today, uh, yesterday not so much. <laughs> uh, from from the, once they finally get all the way up to the top of this, they drop in and go around the corner and onto um, an NXT-based counter. Um, and uh, the count, I have to admit, is not accurate <clears throat> because I seem to be collecting bugs and initially this started off with just one minor little bug, but there's some strange things going on now. I don't know. Your collection is quite large now. <laughs> <laughs> collection of bugs, yes. Uh, after after it goes there, it goes on to uh, a, a module. This is uh, this is actually a, an interesting, clever way of taking a bunch of balls and turning it into a single stream. Um, and the and the thing that makes this work is this inverted slope, because otherwise the balls will find a way to jam. But the inverted slope kind of stirs things up just enough to have it move on. Um, this is. Uh, a wheel, I don't remember what set it's from, but apparently it's only available in one set. It's the only wheel that the balls will roll through. So, whole series of those. 
back around onto the next currently jammed module. There we go. Uh, and it brings um, balls up to oh, uh, the top of this zigzag ramps, which is uh, when it's full of balls, it's kind of entertaining to watch, mesmerizing even. Uh, from there, it goes into a, 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 a module that has a, a conveyor belt that brings up the balls into uh, a bucket, much like you'd see at a water park. They fills up to a certain point and then dumps the balls. Um, so it's kind of interesting and entertaining, and uh, you know, little kids will sit around and wait till it gets filled up. And there you go. Yep. <laughs> so from there, we move on to uh, another implementation of this. Uh, picky eater he calls this one um, that has the same actually that's a great demonstration here's a I, now that it fell off it's a lot easier to show how this works so in slow motion the ball will come down uh, the this arm will come down and, and open up and pick up the ball and when it comes up this gets the back of this is how it's held it bumps into this into something which opens it up again and that's how the ball pops out. So it's got like a little rubber band around there that yep. is able to let the arm move. And the, and the tension as it turns out is kind of tricky. Too much and it won't pick up the ball and too little it won't hold the ball. We were experimenting with that yesterday. Um, from there we go into another um, type of rotating disc that brings balls up and drops them off. And then we drop into a module that uses air to blow the balls. Uh, and it's also a nice place to stand in front of them. You're getting hot. Uh, I think yesterday I saw some kids like going, uh, standing in front of things. Anyway, um, and then as part of the same module, it's got an interesting kind of, um, I don't know what you call that. Windmill scoop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that uh, that uh, brings the balls up to move on to the next module. Um, which which happens to be a conveyor that has a lot of flexibility in its output. <coughs> wow. From there, we go into uh, the beginning of this big mess of monorail. This is where everybody's supposed to go, ooh, monorail. Um, and this is a very clever design, using RCXs to run uh, four different stations, one being an input station, one, one being an output station, and then two hold stations. So we can have two trains on the loop, and they will be stopped and held until the train, the track ahead of them is clear. Um, and so it, it picks up a certain number of balls, moves on, and, and once it gets to the next hold station, or actually once it leaves the train, the, the next one will come. This will realize that, hey, I can go on to the station now and move on and pick up balls. Meanwhile, the one that's got balls is going to the unload station. And we can walk around the corner over there. Thank you. So from there, the balls get dumped out of the monorail car uh, and into a, a, a small uh, stepper that puts the balls into this module, which theoretically can hold a lot of balls, but reality is if you put too many in there, it causes the thing to break. This uses um, a, a, a toggle mechanism that's, that's run by two springs to assure that the electric switch switches over the off spot. Uh, took, took me a long time to get this reliable enough. I've, this is like its fifth iteration or something. Now I'm comfortable with this aspect of it. The rest of it still needs some work, but it seems to be working pretty well this weekend. And there we go into a, a small Ferris wheel that, that picks up balls, you know, three or five at a time, um, and slowly rotates them around and dumps them into a big... Big Ferris wheel uh, holds uh, 50 something balls and slowly brings the balls all the way around and then they get knocked off on the other side. We'll go to the other side. Okay. And this, this module's been around for a while, so you guys have seen it before. From there it goes into, um, and, and again, I'm going to refer to this as a prototype. <laughs> Because I'm still trying to get it to work. Still a prototype. <laughs> I don't know how many years I've been saying that, but um, <clears throat> it's uh, some of the things that are are weird about it. I I, I finally gotten figured out, and uh, I, I think it's time for me to actually rebuild it and turn it into a done module. Um, from there, we go on to uh, a new module. This is uh, 
a new GDC builder. Um, it's an interesting design. The balls come in. Uh, there's a big motor running here that, that has a cam that lifts this center section up uh, every once in a while to, to allow the balls to bump to the next. The next module has uh, basically the balls come in and split into two paths and they alternatively shoot up to this um, catcher. Um, it's kind of neat. They use the uh, the transparent uh, motor piece to hold the balls as they're shooting. That's a pretty neat idea. And there we go into um, a, a, a conveyor that dumps the balls on this sideways rotating conveyor uh, with the pins on it. The idea being that the pins space close together, the balls won't fall through. And then once it gets to the top and it goes around the, the sprocket, the, the opens up and the balls drop out. Pretty neat idea. This has been working pretty well. Uh, from there we go on to um, a, a yet a different style of conveyor um, using those nice, cool, shiny brown links. Uh, from there we go into another conveyor um, that uh, brings the balls up to the very tippy top and has a swivelable output, which gives us some flexibility. It's good to have flexibility putting, putting this together. Uh, then it drops the balls into a very small little stepper type module onto, uh, this was last year's Brick World's workshop module, and we'll see more of those later. Um, and that just dumps it into this uh, long tipping ramp, of, um, which allows the balls to collect here, and then the ramp tips down so they pour in. And when the ramp is up, this tips back so that the balls don't shoot into the underneath it and make a mess. And there we go to a another relatively simple conveyor, um, which then feeds into uh, Mr. Mueller, Thomas Mueller's uh, pair of modules, and he kind of combined them into one to to have a shot at meeting the spec. We'll get into that one later. So from there, the uh, these balls get flipped into the bottom of this conveyor belt, which goes way, 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 way up, and way, way, way across, and then way, way, way down, and then they turn around with a very similar setup as this, and come back, back up another big conveyor, and on across a big ramp, and down this tube. And these, as you can see, this ramp, if we just let the balls go down this ramp, without any kind of damping, they would just fly down. But he uses uh, links every once in a while to slow them down. Man. Okay. So from there, we move on to some new mod. This is a, a new module, and I, I love the color scheme. Um, it's a simple conveyor using the old links. Um, and in uh, slopes, I mean uh, arches upside down to make a, a curved tube for the ball to roll out of. Uh, and from there we go into a module that you've seen before, it's run by pneumatic. Interestingly enough, I had a, um, a piston fail. And what I don't quite understand is it was the second time I've had a piston fail in the exact same spot. This one. Don't ask me why. I have no explanation for that. Um, why there's, you know, six pistons running this whole thing, why the same one, the same position has failed twice, and it doesn't have a heavy load, so please somebody explain that to me. Uh, from there we go into a conveyor, this is, um, according to the builder, he's eventually going to turn this into a, a real castle, uh, and and I see the makings of the beginnings of how this is going to be, but he felt a little time pressure, so he just kind of finished it off for now. I'm, I'm ex I have great expectations for this module in the future. Uh, from there, we move on to um, this complicated thing of a mess of a thing. But it's, what's interesting about it is it's all kind of interconnected. Um, so there's, we call this one module, but it really can be broken down into several pieces. This is uh, very much like the, the Brick World um, workshop module from last year. And that feeds this interesting conveyor system, which has a piece of... I'm going to pick this up to show you. has a... If you look, notice underneath, there's a conveyor running around with its, uh, funny things on it and a couple of wheels on top. And then this loosely sits on top of it so that it makes a wave that the balls travel over. 
pretty neat. Pretty yeah. neat idea. So, and then it comes up here. There's a, a conveyor that brings the balls around, and another conveyor that brings it up. And he has the option of making this recirculate, so this can be a standalone running thing. Uh, right now, we have it switched to move on, uh, and we had to. Uh, there's this kind of big gap here because we had a couple modules that didn't survive yesterday, so we had to extend this ramp. Uh, uh, this module. It was actually, it's pretty big, but we'll talk about it in pieces. Um, one of the things was this module had not been tested very well, and the input section kind of disintegrated, gave us a hard time, jammed, fell apart. So we took it apart. We made the ramp go over to the, the really interesting part, which is working well. Um, they just kind of blip along by these alternating steps, uh, and that feeds into the uh, one of the more, into another interesting by pneumatics. And if you have these ramps as they lift and go down, uh, it's all driven by pneumatics. There's a big pump here and some, some uh, the air tanks to hold the pressure. Uh, and then every stage here has its own piston and drives the switch to drive the next stage. So it's a, it's a sequence of lifting platforms to get the balls out to the next one. And there we're going to, um, uh, uh, it's based on the, a concept of a phylo module using the bucket. Uh, it's been implemented in such a way that I think it's much more reliable than the original phylo design. It seems to be working fine. Um, using a big scoop. So when you use a big scoop, you got to get get it back to meeting the spec. you got to squeeze the balls in again. And here we have this section of, these are returning modules from last year's uh, workshop. Um, and as you can see, there's a few of them that are pretty much stock, like this one. Uh, and, and then there are others who have totally decorated their their modules, uh, made them out of different colors. We got a pink and an orange and a bunch of light blue here, or whatever they call that color. Uh, and it, you got a whole serpentine chain of these. Um, then uh, after the last one of those, and you can see people have done different things that when they're testing at home, they've discovered certain things about them to improve them from the original design. You can see these have additional things on the side. I don't think we're in the original design. Maybe they were. I don't know. It's been a long day. Um, but people have added parts to make it more reliable and more colorful um, and to keep try to keep the balls moving on without falling on the floor, which is the idea. From there, we go into this uh, large module, which has a, a large conveyor in it. This is from a new new GBC builder, and um, I've seen this style of module online, off and on for years. This is the first time I've, I've had a, a good size one like this at a show, and it seems to be working pretty well. At the top here, he's got, currently has three different paths for the balls to go, um, and each one is, is interesting in its own way. And, and it, uh, as far as I know, this has been working great all weekend, right? Yeah. It is, it is awesome to look at with all the different paths the balls can take down. Yeah, and one of them at the, at the very end here has a loop-de-loop. -loop. Got to have a loop-de-loop. -loop. So this makes it. You know, this is good. Um, from there, as you may have noticed, we're getting into a noisy section. Um, this has been nicknamed Beehive because of the noise. Uh, and this is, this is a, uh, a, a modified version of this, but... What this is, uh, this is this year's Brickworld Workshop module. It was designed by Brian Bonahum. Um, he beat the crap out of it to make it reliable. Uh, and I think that we're on version 12, and that's what was used finally on the in the workshop. Um, the idea behind this is that it's a standard module, and then if you take a piece or two off, we can spy you can stack them in a spiral so we've done just that there are 53 in this stack um, so there's 53 modules here that's more than most great ball contraptions yeah that's <laughs> wow um, so there's we had at the workshop itself um, there were 30 people who bought bought in to buy kits and built the kits at at the workshop there were also an additional 15 people who brought parts based on the parts list. So we had 45 kits being built 
at the workshop, and those plus a few more are in the stack. Um, the one thing that's so each one of these individual modules is owned by individual people. The the very base of this is custom because it's got to be able to support them in the spiral. After that, they just spiral up. The other thing that's custom is how the balls get back out, which the very top you can see they drop out of that last module and they fall down into this, isn't it cleverly designed, uh, brick world looking emblem here. Um, and this mechanism here slows the drop down to the point where a ball hits, one drops out the bottom. It really keeps the, it cuts down on the energy. Um, so from there we go into this uh, internal spiral module and it really the, the view is on the end where you can see the balls coming up. Um, this one's been around for a few years, works pretty well. And uh, after that, they go into a NXT-driven module um, where the motors and sensors uh, know where the, the mechanism that's going up and down is and, and repeatedly just bring it up and down nice and slow. And there we go into a, another NXT-driven module. Um, <clears throat> and this one... Uh, effectively, you know, takes the balls and slams them into the next rack, which, you know, they work their way up. I have to say, I, I really like this module, but it's pretty abusive. Um, I'm going to point this out, and I will get grief for this later, which is fine. This, this piece here is pretty solid. It's used in several places. Well, this one's broken, as you can notice, uh, and it was up here. Um, this is the second time this part has gotten destroyed by this module. Uh, there's a lot of torque here, and when things go wrong or just over time, it, it, it breaks pieces. So, um, but it, other than that, it works pretty well. From there, we go into uh, a, a stepper, which is two large steps that will just pump the balls up a little higher, uh, and into a smaller stepper just to get around the corner. Uh, and this is, I, I call these steppers, but this is really a stepper module. Um, where uh, the balls work themselves up by step a step at a time, uh, and this one's kind of interesting because it has multiple multiple paths. Um, and then from there we go into a, a module that is um, has a conveyor to bring it up to the top, and a series of uh, flip flops to send the ball in different paths. So there's four possible paths here, um, and they they all end up going back to the same place to get to the next module, of course. And from from there, once they come out of this, they go into this um, uh, module which is designed to be a doorway. Uh, it goes up a big, huge conveyor and across a ramp uh, to the other side and allows us to walk underneath without having to climb under tables, which is a good thing. Um, so one of, the, one of the interesting things about this is uh, there's, a, there's a continuous problem with the top of conveyors. We have a pair of pins bringing the ball up, and then you have to get the ball out of that. Uh, and one of the issues is, if you go too fast, you can capture the ball between the, the pin and the two pins that are bringing it up. This one's designed so it has a, a place, it's a spring-loaded pin, and if it fails to, uh, to get on the top ramp, it, it will go down the second ramp. So if, if things get jammed up there, it'll pop down and go down this path instead of the top path. <laughs> Interesting <Yeah>. save. <laughs> so here they, they zigzag their way down um, and then end in a spiral. And this is back to where we started. Now I want to talk about what this is. Last year we set the North American world record at 80 modules. This year, depending on how you count, and I know... Mako and I need to talk. Mako, I know you will see this video. If we count this stack of modules as one, I think we currently have 104 modules, which is blows away our North American record of last year. If you count that those as individual modules, we're at 156 modules, which is a world record. So if I leave it to Mako whether he accepts that or not. I talked to the people who assembled this and said, well, we can take this apart, add a table temporarily, and just spread them all out linearly and, and clearly set the world's record. I said, how long would that take? 
three hours. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so, as for number of modules on the table, we have the world record. Okay. If you're going to get picky about how you what you call a module, we have a North American yeah. record. But either way, it's an incredible layout. You know, how many people ended up working on this? You know, well, if you if you count if you count, okay, if you yeah. count the 45 people <laughs> built that, where it's like 55, 60 people here. If you if discount that, which I can't. Um, the, the number of people that have been that have contributed, I don't know. It's like it's like 15 people, which is a, a, a big step up from previous years. I think the workshop from last year and and the popularity of GBC in general has just gone skyrocketed. Uh, and, and honestly, I think you know you guys get to take some of the credit for that. Um, there are people that I've met who saw the video that we did here a year ago. Um, that's the reason they, they they came this year. That's the reason they started making modules. That's the reason they came to this year's workshop. Um, there were there were plenty of public here yesterday who recognized me uh, and some of these modules uh, and were you know totally excited by the fact that. We've effectively doubled the number of modules as we've had from from last year. Uh, it's it's a little overwhelming. Um, I'm I'm surprised I'm still sane actually. Uh, and you know growth is good, and I encourage that. But this leap in growth we've had from last year is just amazing. And if we do it again next year, I will be insane. <laughs> so uh, I really I I think that sums it up. Well, that's awesome. I really appreciate you taking us through that, and it's, it's good to hear about all that growth, you know, more people getting involved. That's really cool to hear about. Yeah, it's an awesome thing.